Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I'm going to talk to you about an event in the next few days that is also going to become a course on Macmillan Research Education. And it's all about hypertension, COVID-19, and the COVID vaccine. And this is part of my educational series where I'm trying to convert the research that I've been doing for the past three years into really tangible understanding education and the practical applications for what that knowledge means. I've started this off with hypertension because it is such a big topic and it is really important for us to understand how both the infection and potentially otherwise could impact this very critical disease. So the important point is that everybody is responsible for their blood pressure. What you need to now do is have a better understanding of what that means. And so I'm going to take you through a few basic points. And there is going to be a link in the description to register uh, for this course. Now, it's free when I'm recording it. And subsequently, it will be available at a nominal fee. So if you want to join it for free, there are limited spaces available. I'm very happy to answer questions because it will help me to build out the content if I know what questions people have. And so here is a general overview as to the kind of topics that I'll be looking at in that time. And um, this is the course overview generally. Um, it's looking at hypertension, underlying mechanisms and uh, associated factors. Critically, I'll be focusing especially on ACE2 depletion because that's part of where my research into autoimmunity came from and ATR1 autoantibodies and evidence-based information to help people understand. Now, it may sound complex on the surface, but in reality, I'm going to aim to have the first few sections of it carrying really critical but basic understandings about hypertension because if you are not affected, I guarantee you, you will have a loved one who is probably older who is. They may probably need this information, especially as we move forward. You have to remember that in the recent discussions that we were having about the risks that exist at the population level around excess deaths, my anticipation is that this is not going to go away. This is going to remain with us. And everything that I am focused on is how do we mitigate some of those challenges that exist across the population. So here is another part of it that is really important. When I spoke about uh, before with ACE2, it's what we call the renin angiotensin system. And this is especially important as we move forward in the, panic, um, in the pandemic. And in this image here, I'll make this full screen, I've highlighted this particular um, protein, it's angiotensin II. And this is what drives most of the hypertensive play, um, um, problems in many people, kidneys, adrenal cortex, uh, posterior pituitary, vascular smooth muscle. And this is what is affected by angiotensin converting enzyme 2, ACE2. So ACE works here to convert 1 to 2, but ACE2 converts this into a less um, inflammatory product, angiotensinogen 1 to 7. But that, that will be covered in a little bit more detail. But it's that kind of thinking about what happens if ACE2 is depleted. What are the ramifications? How does it impact people's own blood pressure control? And these are questions that we have to understand as we move forward. Additionally, it also will have this uh, important piece of information about a home blood pressure monitoring sheet. This is something I advise everyone who has hypertension to do, and people who are not sure over a certain age should at least get it checked. And there is a reason that this is important, and there is a way that this can be used 
where your understanding of blood pressure is your responsibility. Believe me, from a clinical point of view, if your blood pressure is poorly controlled and you have an, a long, an, in the long term, have a complication, nobody's going to check with your family doctor to find out how well it was controlled. It becomes your problem. And so in that respect, I always say to patients, your blood pressure is your responsibility. That's the application across the board. Um, there's an important piece of this that takes me back to the work that was done. And I'm going to show you this just before I, I, I close out. This was in 2020. So in May 2020, I was looking at ACE inhibitors in black patients. Was it relevant? And we already know that ACE inhibitors are not as effective in black patients with hypertension. And probably based on the current research, it may be that it's related to ACE2 levels being higher in, um, in blacks versus Caucasians, say, or um, any other race. And how does that impact angiotensin II levels? And what does it mean even going forward with regards to COVID-19 and the impact that other interventions could have on ACE2? These are absolutely critical questions. And because there is so little attention on the longer term risks to the population, I think it's incumbent on everybody to take responsibility for what could happen. Look out for friends, for loved ones. Make sure that they understand the basics of hypertension. And how can you do that? Make sure you're well educated. So if you can't join me for the free course, please look out for the course subsequently in the next few weeks once this has been completed. Your support will be appreciated. So as a final point, remember, whose responsibility? is your blood pressure. It's yours. Make sure you know everything about it that you can. Have a great evening.